my name is Philip Roberts, and I want to talk to you about uh, functional reactive programming and bacon.js, which is a JavaScript implementation of functional reactive programming. That all sounds a bit buzzwords, uh, buzzwordy, buzzwordy. So um, I'm really just going to talk about how to make life a lot easier by making it seem a little more complicated. So when we write real-time code, um, we inevitably end up having to write asynchronous code, right? Because we don't want to block when we're either doing network requests or on like user interactions. So we have to write asynchronous code, which means callbacks. And if anyone's written asynchronous code with callbacks, you know that that implies callback hell, which implies sad developer. So the kind of the big problem with callbacks is that you get this kind of inverted control flow. And the reason, as put quite well by James Coughlin, is that a callback is a black hole, right? It's not a pure function. You don't put a value in and get a value out. You put a value in, seemingly nothing happens, but then all these like arms appear out of the function and like mutate state all over the place in a way that you can't really control or reason about very well. Um, so your code doesn't run top to bottom anymore, right? Like your callbacks just do stuff all over the place, quite hard to reason about as a developer. So I don't want to go too much into the backgrounds of functional reactive programming callbacks. I just want to dive in, show you some bacon, and hopefully that'll express kind of what I'm trying to talk about. So here's a really simple example of a real-time application. Um, we want to just like, keep score by either hitting the plus or minus one button, right? So in jQuery, we would add a click handler to both of these buttons. Uh, we'd have some like external state, which we manually keep track of. And when we click on the plus one button, we increment that state. Then we update the, um, the score value. And we have to do the same in the minus one handler. But as you can see, this code isn't running top to bottom, right? It runs when I click stuff. So when I click plus one, then this bit of code runs. When I click minus one, this bit of code runs. And they're both mutating this like state value. And in this very simple example, that doesn't seem too complicated. But if you extrapolate this out into building like a spreadsheet, which is basically what my product is, manually managing state like this becomes very, very complicated and hard to think about. So what if there was a different way? What if we could express those clicks on those um, two buttons, kind of like a list, right? And we could use our like list management functions, right? Like reduce, which reduces a list down into a single value, our total. And this is not a callback. This is just a pure function. It takes in the current sum, the number, and returns the sum. And then we apply that value to the score div. So that seems OK in principle, but this code would only run once, right? Because we're asynchronous. What if whenever you clicked a button, this array magically updated, this value is magically recomputed, and our score div updated. So it's kind of like, what if instead of A equals B plus C, meaning assign B plus C to A at a given point in time, which is what it means in programming language like world, what if it meant A is always equal to C? Whenever B or C change, we'll update A. So this is what function reactive programming tries to let you express in a in a kind of clean way. So I'm just going to jump into Bacon now. So Bacon gives us a function on a jQuery object, which is as event stream. So this creates a thing called an event stream, which isn't the same as a node stream if you've looked at node streams. So just forget what you know about that for the minute. So an event stream is like a subscribable thing. Let's just call it a thing for now. So we can subscribe to values on this event stream with the onValue function. And I'll show you here. When I click on minus one, I get these jQuery events, right? Just like the jQuery events you get in a click handler. So I create this subscribable thing, and then I subscribe to values on it. At the moment, it doesn't look dramatically similar to using like just the jQuery on click handler. But the nice thing I can do with event streams is I can compose them and manipulate them and create new event streams from old event streams. But before I go into that, um, 
doing console.log to think about these event streams, which are like values in time, doesn't really make sense. So I've created a little visualization here which shows you the events on the stream. So from right to left, oh, I clicked once instead. From right to left is like 10 seconds worth of time. So every time I click, I get a new value on the event stream. So at the moment, these are still these jQuery objects, not very useful. What I really want is like a minus one, right? So just like an array, I can map an event stream. So I take an event stream and create a new event stream, transforming all the values from one to the other with a function. So this function just returns minus one. So every time I click, I get a value on the initial event stream, which pushes a value onto the new event stream of minus one. I know this looks crazy and is confusing. It gets better, I promise. <laughs> so we now have an event stream for the minus one button, and we can obviously create a similar event stream for the plus one button. Um, Bacon also lets us just pass in a value that we would like to map instead of a function. So I get minus ones on the minus one event stream. I get plus ones on the plus one event stream. So now I need to like start combining these two things so I can merge event streams. So by merging minus ones with plus ones, I get a single event stream which has all the values of both event streams. So I click on minus one, I get a minus one on the top, and in the merge stream, if I get plus one, I get plus one on the merged stream. So I can take these kind of pipes of values and pipe them together. And then I can use like a scan. So if you've used like uh, reduce um, on an array, you can scan. So for every value on my merged event stream, call this function and like merge all the existing values down into one. So scan is just like the summing up an array I showed you before. So if I hit minus one, my merged event stream, I shouldn't point to my screen, my merged event stream um, gets a minus one, and the sum of those is minus one. Now if I hit plus one, I get a one on my merged event stream, and I add one to my value on the scanned event stream, so zero, one, two, three, four. So now I've created this event stream of values which represents the score in time. And then I can assign which is like a subscribe to that merged event stream and just assign the score div calling the text function. So every time I get an event in my now all merged down into one event stream of the current score, we just assign it to this div. So I hit plus one, I go up, I hit minus one, I go down. So I know this looks more complicated than the jQuery version, but this stuff scales a lot better than trying to do this manual state management. Nowhere in this code do I explicitly manage state. This code runs top to bottom. This is not a callback function. This is just a function that returns sums and values. And once you get over the confusing declarative nature of it, it becomes a lot simpler to reason about. So those are event streams, streams of values in time. Functional programming, uh, functional reactive programming, and Bacon also have the concept of streams of values in time that also have a current value. So a stream, an event stream is just like historical values. There's only a value whenever you push a value onto the stream. Properties kind of maintain the current state of that stream. So let's look at a very simple spreadsheet, right? Two cells, and this uh, result is the sum of the two. So in jQuery, we kind of do what we did before. We have these external state variables. When there's a key up event, grab the value of the input, turn it into an integer, like compose external state and update the one. I can do two, and I get three. So again, this code is now like modifying state. Imagine how you would manage this problem if we had an actual spreadsheet of thousands of cells by manually managing the state of every cell, like it kind of gets crazy. And this like implementation also has other bugs, right? If I put in random letters, I'm going to get not a number because it can't add numbers. And obviously, I could start adding in um, code to manage that. But because I'm like manually modifying state all over the place, it's really hard to kind of keep track of and keep right, and also just to understand. It's not clear from this code 
that all I'm doing is adding the value of two cells. I'd like have to do all this crazy callback and state manipulation. So let's build it up in, in, um, in Bacon. So I kind of do as I did before. On the key up event, push a new event onto an event stream which represents the value of A. Now, instead of the jQuery event, I want the current input value. So grab the current input value by mapping every value on the event stream. So I get 1, I get 12. And then I can start just composing this event stream, right? So I would also like to parse all of the values on that event stream as integers, not strings. Um, I'd like to filter out, just like filter on an array. I'd like to reject anything that's um, not a number. So keep all the stuff that are numbers. And I'd also like to like debounce that stream. So I don't want to run computations on every single key press. I just want to wait like a little bit. So if I keep bashing this thing, it will wait for like 300 milliseconds before uh, sort of recom recomputing everything. So I can just compose this event stream in a really obvious way. It's obvious what's going on here. Like turn it into an input value, turn it into a number, reject not numbers, and debounce the stream. So I can do the same for B. So now I've got an event stream which represent A and B. So if I type a 1, if I type a 2. But now how do we merge these two streams into a single value like we did before? We can't really, um, we don't really want to merge them in the same way, because now if I merge, I get these two values. And I suppose I could use scan, but scan would keep track of all the full history, which isn't really going to be helpful for me. Um, so what we can use is we can convert these two event streams to properties, and then properties can be combined. So I convert each event stream into a property whose initial value is 0, but that value will be updated every time there's a new value on the stream. And then I can combine a and b with a function. So my function is sum, obviously, so add the argument of a and the argument of b. Um, so any time either A or B change, the answer will be updated, always. So one, two, and you can see that um, my result down here is three, which is exactly what we want. And because I've composed numbers trivially, so if I type in random stuff, it doesn't push a new event onto the stream, it doesn't update the property, it doesn't update any dependent object. And now that I have a combined event stream, I can assign the result back to the value of the cell. So I do one, I do two, I get three. Is that starting to look cool? <laughs> so this is just like a glimpse so far of how you can create and compose event streams and properties in a way that you can read because programmers were used to reading from top to bottom, and that's exactly how this stuff works. Um, and you can reason about, and the implementation becomes kind of more obvious. Like that could not be kind of more clear as to what that actually means. So that's just the surf, like just scratching the surface. So, and I want to talk about like AJAX requests. So manually managing the state of AJAX requests is a nightmare. So as a very simple example, like you know there's live like this, a live username checker, right? So I want to see, I want to sign up for a new service and I want to see if Phil is available, right? So um, this implementation isn't intentionally buggy, or by design it's buggy. Um, so here, right, Phil is available, PH is not available. So this is doing like a sort of a pretend Ajax call in the background, but just think of it as doing an Ajax call. So how can we create this kind of implementation with Bacon. So first of all, we do exactly as we did before. Create an event stream of values representing the current value of that input field. But now we have to do these AJAX requests. So I guess I could subscribe to values on the event stream, do my AJAX call with that value, and then when the callback, you know, pass a callback, which will update this um, is it available cell? But, well, hang on, we've just introduced a callback here, and we kind of don't really like callbacks. So how are we going to do that? 
So we can't just map. Like, up here we map, right? But that's because this function returns immediately. What would our Ajax request return? Like, it can't return a callback. That wouldn't really work. It can't return the value because it doesn't have it yet. So how can we kind of do a map, but in a way that works? So the leap, and this might not be immediately apparent, but it becomes obvious, and that is that an Ajax request is itself a stream. It's just a, stre uh, it's just a stream that will only have one value, and that value will appear on the stream when the Ajax request completes, obviously. Um, <laughs> so we make a request, and then at some point in the future, maybe sometime, might be instantly, might be 10 seconds from now, we'll get an value on that stream. So Bacon helps us create streams for Ajax requests by uh, giving us a sort of Bacon stream from callback function. So don't worry too much about the syntax. This is not particularly important. But we can create a stream from a, a, this query value representing this Ajax call. So how can we use that function? Again, map won't work because this is returning a stream and we don't really want to create a stream for every value. We want to create just the value, like the result values. So we need flat map. So flat map is a function. Now bear with me. This is going to be like this is going to be tough. For every value on an event stream, create a new event stream using the function we made, and then merge all the results on those event streams back into a single stream. So we go from a stream of values and then a stream, new stream of values, which represents the results of all those um, Ajax requests. And we now have a stream we can work with without having to worry about Ajax, which is cool. So that's flat map. So here's how it works. So I type a P. And at some point later, this just gives like a random delay, a new value will appear on the stream, which represents the res well, which is the result of the Ajax call. So and the code is just username flat map Ajax stream, which is this function I created. So that works. But depending on the randomness of oh, too fast. the randomness of the Ajax requests, if you've ever tried to build something like this, you know the problem where some Ajax requests take slightly longer than others? So you might make a call and then make a second call. So we might search for ph and fill. And fill might come back before ph has come back. So ph comes back later. And then that's the one we update, because it's the last one we saw. So if I can get like random things to work. So there we go. So I've typed in phul. And because phul returned before the phu call, which was first, I've updated this div to show the wrong value. And if you've tried to manage that with jQuery, you have to like create timers. You have to manually keep track of every single Ajax call you've made, figure out which ones you don't care about, and it's hell. Here's the change in bacon, flat map latest. Flat map, flat map latest. So flat map latest says, if I have the result of a later value on my original stream back, before the earlier one, then just discard the earlier one, because we don't care about it anymore. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, which is like really clear now, like what I'm trying to achieve. And I haven't had to like manually manage the state of all those Ajax requests at all, which is awesome. Thank you. Sorry, I should say that um, for further reading, uh, learn some Haskell. This is where these concepts came from, but you don't really have to know Haskell to start using them. Um, RxJS is a library that came out of Microsoft, I think, which is reactive programming for JavaScript. And Bacon is sort of a further extension and rethinking of those ideas, uh, not by me, by um, 